May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. November 26, 2023 The Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will seek my sheep, and I myself will visit them. Just as a shepherd visits his flock, in the day when he will be in the midst of his sheep that were scattered, so will I visit my sheep. And I will deliver them from all the places to which they had been scattered in the day of gloom and darkness. I will feed my sheep, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek what had been lost, and I will lead back again what had been cast aside, and I will bind up what had been broken, and I will strengthen what had been infirm, and I will preserve what was fat and strong, and I will feed them on judgment. But as for you, O my flocks, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, among rams and among he goats. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He provides me with a place of pasture. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But now Christ has risen again from the dead, as the firstfruits of those who sleep. For certainly, death came through a man. And so, the resurrection of the dead came through a man. And just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be brought to life, but each one in his proper order, Christ, as the firstfruits, and next, those who are of Christ, who have believed in his advent. Afterwards is the end, when he will have handed over the kingdom to God the Father, when he will have emptied all principality, and authority, and power. For it is necessary for him to reign, until he has set all his enemies under his feet. Lastly, the enemy called death shall be destroyed. For he has subjected all things under his feet. And when all things will have been subjected to him, then even the Son himself will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. But when the Son of Man will have arrived in his majesty, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon the seat of his majesty, and all the nations shall be gathered together before him. And he shall separate them from one another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he shall station the sheep, indeed, on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king shall say to those who will be on his right, Come, you blessed of my father. Possess the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink, I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you covered me, sick, and you visited me, I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the just will answer him, saying, Lord, when have we seen you hungry, and fed you, thirsty, 
and given you drink? And when have we seen you a stranger and taken you in? Or naked and covered you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and visit to you? And in response, the king shall say to them, Amen I say to you, whenever you did this for one of these, the least of my brothers, you did it for me. Then he shall also say, to those who will be on his left, depart from me, you accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you did not give me to eat, I was thirsty, and you did not give me to drink, I was a stranger, and you did not take me in, naked, and you did not cover me, in sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he shall respond to them by saying, Amen I say to you, whenever you did not do it to one of these least, neither did you do it to me. And these shall go into eternal punishment, but the just shall go into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we live each day preparing for the moment when our actions and charity will be unveiled before God during the Last Judgment? Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Matthew 25 verses 31-33 Happy Solemnity of Jesus Christ, King of the Universe! The church liturgical year is set up in such a way that we ponder the entire life of Christ in different seasons and at different times. Advent is a preparation for the celebration of the first coming of Christ that also focuses upon the final coming. Christmas is a time to celebrate the Incarnation when the Son of God was made manifest to the world through His birth. Lent and Easter focus upon the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, an ordinary time, presents us with the many lessons and miracles of Jesus' public ministry. Additionally, there are many special memorials, feasts and solemnities by which we intensely focus upon some particular person or aspect of our faith. Each feast and season is meant to help us delve more deeply into the mystery of faith that we celebrate. This is the final Sunday of our church year. Our focus today is the end of time, when Jesus will return again to judge the living and the dead, and establish his permanent and glorious kingdom, visible to all. The Catechism of the Catholic Church describes this moment in time this way. The last judgment will come when Christ returns in glory. Only the Father knows the day and the hour, only he determines the moment of its coming. Then through his Son Jesus Christ, he will pronounce the final word on all history. We shall know the ultimate meaning of the whole work of creation and of the entire economy of salvation, and understand the marvelous ways by which his providence led everything towards its final end. The last judgment will reveal that God's justice triumphs over all the injustices committed by his creatures, and that God's love is stronger than death. God is truly a mystery. He is the greatest of mysteries. As a mystery, God is forever the unknown, in the sense that he is endless and eternal. He has revealed himself to us, but we will forever enter deeper into our knowledge of him because of his infinite and endless nature. This is important to understand because when we contemplate the many mysteries God has revealed, we must approach them as both known and unknown. Our solemnity today is one of those mysteries. Of this great moment in time, we know that the Son of God will return to earth, 
to issue forth his final judgment upon all the living and the dead. It will be the final moment of time, as we know it now. The dead will rise, and our bodies and souls will be reunited. The just will enter the glorious new heavens and earth. Those in mortal sin will be condemned for eternity. The world will no longer be a fallen world. All illness and disorder in nature will be eliminated. Peace will ensue, and perfect order will be established. God will be the universal king and will govern this new world forever. As we celebrate this glorious mystery of our faith, we must accept and believe all that we know about it. But as we do, we must also approach it with deep humility, admitting to ourselves that we will never fully comprehend the awesomeness of that day until it comes. No earthly concept will ever come close to fully describing that moment in time, but we must adhere to our belief in it, with a profound and unwavering faith. Reflect today, with a deep faith, upon this glorious and definitive moment in time still to come. On that day, all that will matter is how faithful you have been to the will of God. Your charity will become an open book for all to see, and the rewards for your charity will remain with you forever. As you think about that day with faith, allow it to encourage you to do all you can today to prepare for the last judgment. When that day comes, it will be too late to change. Get ready today and tomorrow and every day of your life, so that when Jesus does return in all his glory, it will be the most glorious day of your life. Let us pray. Most glorious and universal King of the universe, I believe and profess with a firm faith that you will return again to judge the living and the dead and will establish your glorious kingdom that will never end. Please help me to understand the greatness of that moment and to do all I can every day of my life to prepare for it so that it is, indeed, the beginning of the best day of my life. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.